All right, everyone, Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, the daily fail, the meme review, software releases, and the websites by plebes. Today, we've got a special guest, fellow Bitcoiner and pleb. We love him, Ben the Carman. He's also coder at Sherbits, and he's going to join us for the fun. But right now, we're going to the numbers. Let's do it. All right. At the time of this recording, we are at block height 679,965. Bitcoin price, 56,390. Chain rewrite days, 649. Wow. Um, total lightning capacity, 1,203.39. Bitcoin versus gold market cap, 9.08%. Sats per dollar, 1,773. And obviously, there's no Satoshi, the Bitcoin chicken. No Satoshi, no the Satoshi. Bitcoin chicken, because we didn't break an all-time high. But man, I look, it's bittersweet to stay at these levels because it's cheaper sats, man. So I like it, bro. You know, it, everything's good for Bitcoin. It goes up, it's good for Bitcoin. Channels is good for Bitcoin. It goes down, it's good for Bitcoin because cheaper sats. Anyways, Phil, it's time for the daily fail. But wait, before we go to the daily fail, did you see the chain rewrite days? We, we were hovering around 600 and we jumped to 649. That That's pretty intense. Oh. Yeah, that's like, that's pretty intense security right there. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying. Very, um, yes. very interesting observation, Phil. Very interesting. <laughs> it's time for the daily fail. All right, everyone. The daily fail is Megan McArdle. And I have learned from Nico, the blue check right away says it all. So we're going to dive right into this idiocy. After eight years, the best case I can come up with is that it's jewelry for techno utopians. They like looking at it. And also, it has some minor side uses as an aid to evading currency controls or hedging against utter disaster. I I'm sorry, but jewelry for techno utopians. I mean, what what exactly do you think we can see? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I mean that that that's just the beginning of this. But honestly, to to downplay sensor uh, 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 censorship resistance that way okay and to paint us as like you know a bunch of uh you know kind of like doomsday trolls bitcoiners are very positive about the future bitcoiners want good things for the future and we've already understood that it's not happening with the current way that you know we deal with our money supply and you know who it's controlled by so it's just a horrible take, and unfortunately, anybody that's listening to her and is not doing their own research is going to be, you know, misled. And yeah, they're going to, you know, have fun staying poor. <laughs> Definitely. And she, Megan R. McCardle, is going to have fun staying poor. Just a couple observation, Phil. She was wearing a mask in her profile picture. Okay, not that a mask is a bad thing, but I think that she's wearing it as a sign of moral superi superiority towards the people that choose not to wear masks, right? It's and she's a journalist for the Washington Post, right? That really says everything that you need to know about this Megan blue check mark McCardle. She is a propagandist, you know, that's just for the state. That's the way that I see, you know, people like her in her profession, right? And, you know, of course, she's going to be okay with the man having current, you know, how scary that sounds currency controls, right? That's one person deciding whether what you choose to spend your money on is okay or not right and she is she's like you know she just skips right over that like you know and it's uh you gonna have fun staying poor anyways ben yeah i mean she's just talking from like a point of privilege she's never experienced any of these bad things that you know these third world countries go through every day and now she's you know you're like oh that's not a real use case they just want to look at it for jewelry it's like no there's you know people are using this to like escape dictatorships what are you talking about truth absolute truth, truth. Amen, man. And it, dude, oh, the blue check marks. Anyways, Phil, it's time for <laughs> the daily meme review. All right, everybody. The meme for today is brought to us by a meme lord. One of the meme lords that came up with laser ray to 100K. Check it out. Labro Hoddle 6. Definitely give him a follow. But, anyways, just check out the meme. Hodlers, Bitcoin FUD. Pretty good. Yeah. Ah, it may, it's one of those things that make you giggle inside but it just doesn't get you over the top, right? But anywho, I'm going to give it this Trident 
Crypto Cloak's case that I have not finished, right? It's just sitting here on my desk. And Phil one day is going to teach me how to solder it, solder the cables. <laughs> Anyways, Phil, what are you going to give it? It's actually a really tough score to beat, man. A Triton case. I actually have to order another one uh, because one of the cases that I did purchase didn't work out so well. Not from crypto cloaks but anyways um yeah that that was yeah that, that wasn't one of those like you're, you're dying uh but it 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 gets the point across uh so i am going with a raspberry pi uh heatsink wow yeah god damn raspberry i think pie. that might have edged out my score because it was more simple but it represented the same thing you get anyways, it a frightened case yeah but yours broke it down you know I don't know. Ben? I thought it was really good. I think it's pretty funny. So I'm going to give it a fully built Raspberry Pi. <laughs> <laughs> Steps up! Oh my God. Why does this Steps always up! happen to me, bro? <laughs> First it was John Vallis. Now it's Ben. Oh, I have to start giving the score last now. This is a <laughs> But that was awesome how that all worked. Anyways. All right. I think we're all in, in like. All right. We're in sync. We're in sync. Uh, but, just, but, oh, and for, anyone, for anyone watching, we totally did not plan this. That's it's all awesome. unscripted. <laughs> I that just was, picked, literally picked stuff up off the table. That was crazy. And I totally just looked at that. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> Phil, it's time for the daily news sponsored by Crypto Cloaks. All right, everybody, just some quick headlines before we get to the nitty gritty of it. Right. And that is what the hell is going on with Taproot and all these things. But let me just go over this real quick because this did come out today and it was kind of important. Important. Venmo customers can now buy and sell and hold Bitcoin. But I just want to pop it. Man, they have 70 million customers. That's absolutely crazy. But as Bitcoin Magazine really puts it well, sovereignty over one's funds is arguably the most fundamental aspect of Bitcoin. Yet it appears from the release that Venmo is completely dismissing it. Yes, so this is PayPal's own terms of use. You are currently you currently are not able to send crypto assets to family and friends, which crypto assets basically means bitcoins and shitcoin. And on the bottom it says you can you also cannot use crypto assets directly as currency to pay for goods. So essentially, what PayPal is trying to tell you is that if you buy, if you buy bitcoin on PayPal, this is what you're buying. Dog shaka an IOU for real Bitcoin. It's worthless. It's like this. It's even more worthless because it makes you think that it's worth something. At least it's wears its worthlessness <laughs> on the front. Anyways, Bill. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I mean, if I understand this correctly, it's pretty much just the PayPal announcement, but with the Venmo logo. I yeah. mean, that, that's really what it is. So it's the same thing. You can buy and sell IOU Bitcoin on their platform, but I'm guessing you can't actually move any of your Bitcoin off of that platform, which means you don't really hold Bitcoin. So, hey. Yeah, don't buy this stuff. It's paper buy Bitcoin. It. Ben, you got thoughts? Yeah, buy the real thing. Like a lot of people get screwed that buy it on there and then have to sell it to uh, actually get real Bitcoin. And then, you know, then you get screwed over in taxes. So just just go and buy real Bitcoin. I completely agree with that. Phil, do you agree with that? I do. Yes, I definitely agree. We at Simply Bitcoin only believe in buying real Bitcoin F PayPal. But anyways, to get to the actual piece of news that you guys are here for today, check this out. Phil and I had no idea how to explain this to you. I'm just going to pull up the no BS Bitcoin Telegram group, which, by the way, definitely join. This is where we get our software releases from. But check this out. User activated soft fork Bitcoin client has been released intended to force taproot activation if miner signaling via speedy trial fails to reach the required threshold of 90%. There's a lot to break down here. Uh, ben, first of all, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, so um, there's for this last like six months, people have been arguing over how to activate Taproot. And because, uh, you, know, you know, Taproot is this upgrade for Bitcoin and we all need to turn it on at the same time. But how we turn it on needs to be in a decentralized way. It can't just be like, you know, Joe Biden says turn it on right now. So we need to figure out the correct way to do that. And uh, there's lots of arguments over this. And uh, one of them was speedy trial. Another one was just a UASF. 
So Bitcoin Core um, is like releasing very soon a client that is the, the speedy trial, which is like a three month signaling period for miners. Yeah. Then, so, uh, so, so, so let me, let me, let me stop you there, Ben, because let me connect it with yesterday's episode. That's the one that you were talking about, Phil. The, uh, ben, I think you're talking about the Bitcoin Core version 21.1 release candidate one. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. This includes speedy trial activation method for Taproot. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so that uh, has like a three month signaling period that miners can signal. And if it doesn't, then it'll just fail and then we'll figure out a different way to tap activate Taproot. And then this client that was released is. Wait, wait. A, so, so it's a way to get people, it's a way to incentivize people to use Taproot, but it still doesn't force them to use it. Yeah, like it just gives an option for miners to turn it on if um, they all agree, basically. Mm -hmm. but, I, uh, I have a question. I, I do have one question. Um, so I've been seeing some tweets from Luke Dash Jr. about some, I don't know if it's an, if I'm mistaking this completely, but it's like, a, is it like a completely different client than what you're discussing right now? I mean, so this software release, the UAS client, is a completely separate release. I mean, it's just, Bitcoin Core version 21.0, but uh, it just has a UASF on top instead of um, the speedy trial. So basically what it does, it's it's compatible if speedy trial succeeds and the miners signal in this first three months. But okay. if miners don't signal, um, I think a UASF will occur in like October of 2022. So now just like, you know, if we... If we don't uh, get the the good like easy method of minor signaling, then we'll just fall back to a US UASF like a year later. Could you explain what a US uh, US a U a, Thank you, Phil. Uh, could you explain what that is for the view for our viewers that don't know? Yeah, so a UASF is a, a user activated soft fork. So it basically just means that um, we're going to have nodes that just start enforcing the rules and not like rely on miners to activate the soft fork. So this all uh, came about during the SegWit wars where miners wouldn't activate SegWit because, uh, you know, there's like perverse incentives there. So users just said, well, we're just going to start enforcing the rules. And if you guys don't, that's your problem. So basically, it's just like having nodes and the actual users like the plebs like us to start enforcing the rules in our software by just, you know, downloading the UAS client instead of um, waiting for miners to signal. So that, that's really interesting. So why, why would miners not want to start adopting this? Um, so like, I mean, the reason for SegWit they didn't um, most likely is because there's this thing called covert ASIC boost that basically let them mine faster. Um, but uh, SegWit destroyed that. So they then couldn't um, get this increased hash rate at no cost. But um, now there's really no incentive to, unless they're like being coerced by like government or something to say like, you know, oh, tap reacts privacy, you can't activate this thing. But by and large, there's really no reason for them not to activate tap root. And Ben, and, and I wanna get Phil's thoughts after, why should people care about this? Why is this important? Because I know, and I'm asking this very fair. I know Phil's laughing right now, but I know a I, lot I'm of people. I'm laughing because you want to get my thoughts. <laughs> no, I want to. I want to get your thoughts on all this, Phil, because <laughs> it's, it's interesting. <laughs> why is this? What? Well, so then, why is this important? Why should people care? You know, because this is a lot of like infrastructure stuff that's going along, that's going on in Bitcoin's background. That if you weren't paying attention to it, you wouldn't even realize that it's happening. Right. So yeah. why is this important? I mean, the nice thing is you don't need to care if you don't want to. You could just keep running the software you're running and it will still work. Like Bitcoin is built to do only backwards compatible upgrades. So if you don't want to care, fucking close the channel right now and you don't, you don't need to. But if you do care, which you should, um, you know, this is a we're adding an upgrade to Bitcoin. We're trying to make Bitcoin better. We, this is going to make Bitcoin better. And we need to do this in a decentralized way. So this is like, you know, the. The people's attempt of doing this and um you know if you want to run the most validating client you're going to need to run one of these to uh actually validate these taproot transactions that are becoming that's awesome so it's like the plebs like kind of you know pushing for that because that's what they want that's pretty cool uh phil you have any closing thoughts i say nothing applicable to the current situation <laughs> okay okay <laughs> And why do I feel like that was vengeful or something? Not at all. I just like, okay. I, I, never I, mind. I, that I, doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's like anything I would add would be like pretend. 
Uh, man, I don't know. It's really interesting. But I just so, like listening and like I'm absorbing, you know, like he's he's speaking and I'm just I, I'm like a sponge, you know, Phil, That's you, all. you're selling yourself short, Phil. You have plenty of great ideas. <laughs> man, it's just dude, this technical stuff. We were just like, man, we have to get Ben on here, you know, because yeah. there's no one better than Ben to explain all of this stuff. Because you make but, it sound easy. Yeah, you, you make know, it like, sound for so you to easy. say what you just said like that. That was easy for you. You know, you're confident with what you just said. Like I can say part of what you just said with some confidence, you know, but just Me, part. Phil and I would have totally word saladed <laughs> that whole upgrade. Right. So oh. we're happy you came on. But uh, I appreciate that, guys. It's, yeah. uh, you know, I spent way too much time learning about Bitcoin. So it's, it's good to have it pay off. It's people like Ben that make bitcoin infrastructure happen so yeah. awesome to ben but uh phil there was a software release today why don't you tell everybody about it software releases all right it looks like we've got uh tails os version 4.18 and that is down below in the show notes awesome thank you phil all right guys that was our show but before we go i want to give a shout out to our awesome guest definitely give him a follow at Ben the Car Man. Ben's awesome. He's currently helping contribute and he's working on these projects. These projects are gonna sound very familiar to you all. He's currently working on the Wasabi Wallet, Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin S, Crystal Bull, B PSBT Toolkit, and Lightning Rod. And he's currently working at SureBits. Definitely give Ben a follow. Super interesting guy. His Twitter is full of useful content. But anyways, guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the show. Smash that like button. Smash it. Yeah. And of course, if you want to continue hearing the news from the Bitcoin clip clip perspective and the catastrophic fiat fails and shitcoin fails, definitely consider subscribing. And we will see you tomorrow for another episode of Simply Bitcoin. <laughs>